hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're here for the first time hi my name is busari moliayo and i am a registered nurse on this channel i talk about nursing and healthcare. and in today's video i am going to be simplifying medications that are used in the treatment of peptic ulcers if you're new here and you want to be a part of the family do click on the subscribe button to join us and also on the bell icon so you get a notification whenever i drop another amazing video with that being said let's get into today's topic To understand how the medications that are used to treat peptic ulcer work, the first thing is you need to understand the basic pathophysiology or the basic pathology behind peptic ulcer so that you will know like what causes peptic ulcer and what the drugs are going there to correct. So in basic terms, peptic ulcer is an excavation or should I say like a wound on the mucosa lining of the stomach, the pylorus and the duodenum. So let's liken it to a child that is playing in the fields, probably playing football with um, his friends, and the child falls and has a bruise on the knee. That knee becomes exposed to the external environment, and once things come in contact with that wound site, the child begins to feel pain. So that is like a basic analogy of what goes on with peticosa inside the body. And there are different things that could cause this to occur. Number one culprit is a bacteria known as H. pylori. Second thing is excessive use of non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as well as stress and a couple of other things. But these are the three major things that are known to cause peptic ulcers. So what the, um, the drugs are going to be doing is either number one, to take out H. pylori, which is an, uh, a bacteria causing peptic ulcer, or they try to work on the acidic um, level or the pH of the stomach, pylorus or duodenum they try to work on the acid level or the acidity sorry or they try to cover the wound or cover the ulceration and stop it from coming in direct contact with the digestive effects of acl now one major thing to note about peptic ulcer is that when it occurs it's usually because the mucosa lining of the stomach pylorus and the duodenum can no longer withstand the digestive activities of hcl so that is why uh, people with peptic ulcer will start feeling sharp pains, which could be described as hunger pangs. So we already know what is wrong and how to resolve it so and what the drugs are coming to do. So let's talk about the various classes of medications that are used in the treatment of peptic ulcers. The first one are antibiotics. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Antibiotics are, is a, like a very broad class of medication, so I won't be diving deep into that in today's video. But basically what the antibiotics do in the treatment of peptic ulcer is that they help to combat H. pylori, which is a bacteria that we have already established is a culprit when we talk about peptic ulcer. There are different types of antibiotics that can be used in the treatment of peptic ulcer, like metronidazole, tetracycline, amoxicillin, and a few others. But before you just go over the counter to take any antibiotics and buy just because you feel you have peptic ulcer it is important that you see a doctor or see a healthcare professional first because there are different things that will be taken into consideration before you are even asked to take antibiotics for peptic ulcer because peptic ulcer doesn't always have to be about h pylori it could be because the person has been using NSAIDs excessively or taking excessive coffee tobacco and other things like that so you need to be sure, and there are different types of antibiotics like I mentioned, so you need to consider things like allergy. You won't go over the counter to buy amoxicillin if you're allergic to penicillin because amoxicillin over obviously contains penicillin. So they'll take into consideration things like allergy, your weight, your height, your age, and gen so many things that they will take into consideration. Other medications that you might be using because of drug-to-drug -drug interaction before you're even asked to use antibiotics. But Antibiotics is one of the medications that would be considered when managing peptic ulcer. Now let's talk about drugs that would help to control the pH of the stomach, pylorus, and the duodenum. First one are antacids. Now let's go back to secondary school when we talk about chemistry and we're like, uh, when you add base to an acid, it forms salt and water. This is a definition that you remember when you're talking about antacids. The basic rationale of using antacids in the management or treatment of peptic ulcer is that they have a buffering effect. 
that is they help to maintain a stable ph in the stomach so that it doesn't become too acidic and causes more ulceration and allows for the ulcers to heal that is a very basic understanding of what antacids do in the management of peptic ulcers Now let's talk about the histamine 2 receptor antagonist. So let's just break it down a little bit a bit. Histamine 2, the receptors antagonist. Antagonists are things that basically like work against something. So obviously these are medications that work against the histamine 2 receptors. Now the stomach or the gastric um, region of the body contains histamine receptors histamine 2 receptors and what this histamine 2 receptors does is that once they bind to histamine they release acid into the stomach okay so what histamine 2 receptors are going to do is to stop these receptors from binding to histamine so that acid is not going to be consistently released into the stomach and we've already established earlier in this video that the more acidic the stomach the more the chances of ulcers to occur and the more the chances of peptic ulcer patients to begin to feel pains. So basically, histamine 2 receptors antagonists will stop histamine 2 receptors from binding to histamine and drop the amount of acid that is released into the stomach. Example of medications that fall under this class of histamine 2 receptor antagonists are semetidine, pamotidine, and ranitidine. You will notice that they have the suffix tidine. So that will help to remember these medications. Now let's talk about the proton pump inhibitor. So this class of drug has the word proton pump inhibitors, right? So it means that they are stopping a pump from pumping whatever it's supposed to pump. That is like a very basic understanding of, you know, that class. So what exactly are proton pumps? Proton pumps are like transporters in the body. You can liken them to like your... Um, Downfall bus, yeah, that's a very good example. And what downfall buses do is to carry passengers from one area to the another. So what this type of downfall buses in your body, that is the proton pump inhibitors. What they do is that they carry androgen ions from an area where they are more concentrated to another area where they are less concentrated. And hydrogen ions, once they move from one area to another, where they are moving to becomes more acidic. And we've already established that the more acidic the stomach and the gastric area is, the more the chances of ulcers to occur. So what proton pop inhibitors will do is to stop this movement or this transportation process. It is very, very simple. So examples of medications that fall under proton pump inhibitors include omeprazole, rabreprazole, and lasoprazole. I don't know, all of them are just sounding azol, azol, azol. Even though we might have azol, azol in other medications like um, deworming drugs, but you know, azol, azol may still help you to remember the medications in this class. Now let's talk about the final class, which are the cytoprotective agents. A very simple way to understand what cytoprotective agents do is to talk about wound dressing. When you dress a wound, you are obviously going to cover it with probably bandage, cotton wool, gauze, or plaster. That's what you're going to be doing because you don't want that area to be exposed to the external environment. That is basically what cytoprotective agents do in peptic ulcer. They help to either coat or cover the ulcerations. So, for example, drugs like misoprostol, cytotec, is going to increase mucus production in the stomach so that there is little to no contact within the ulceration and gastric acid. Do you understand? Then another drug like Socrafid, please pardon my pronunciation, would cause the production of a viscous protective substance that is going to cover the ulcerated areas in the, gast in the gastric region to protect them from coming into contact with gastric acid, which will cause peptic ulcer pains. So these are the various classes of medications that are used in the treatment of peptic ulcer. If you want to watch my video where I talked about the nursing care plan of patients with peptic ulcer, you can click here. And if you also want to watch my other videos related to pharmacology, click here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.